हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज द मोस्ट अवेटेड वीडियो आई गेस दिस इज अ वीडियो फॉर अफोरिज्म नंबर सिक्स दैट इज द अनप्रजाइज ऑब्जर्वर इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अफोरिज्म नंबर सिक्स फ्रॉम ऑर्गेन ऑफ मेडिसिन डॉक्टर हेनेमन इन हिज ऑर्गेन ऑफ मेडिसिन स्टेट्स प्रिसाइसली इन द अफोरिज्म सिक्स अबाउट द अनप्रजाइज ऑब्जर्वर सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द अफोरिज्म नंबर सिक्स द फुट नोट ऑफ अफोरिज्म नंबर सिक्स and what is the difference between aphorism number 6 in the 5th edition as well as in the 6th edition and what hanuman wanted to explain to the physicians through this particular aphorism so without further ado let's get into the video if you're new to my channel please like share and subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get the notification on our latest updates and also share our video with your friends and colleagues the unprejudiced observer well aware of the futility of transcendental speculations which can receive no confirmation from experience be his power of penetration ever so great takes note of nothing in every individual disease except the changes in health of the body and of the mind that is the morbid phenomena accidents symptoms which can be perceived externally by the means of senses that is to say he notices only the deviations from the former healthy state of the now diseased individual which are felt by the patient himself remarked by those around him and observed by the physician all these perceptible signs represent the disease in its whole extent that is together they form the true and only conceivable portrait of the disease now since we have been through the aphorism itself now let us see the explanation of this aphorism now the unprejudiced observer is well aware of the futility of transcendental speculations so what is transcendental concerned with the prior or intuition based knowledge or independent of experience so you should not let your intuitions block your observation okay so that is speculation so you should not you should stop yourself from realizing that intuitions of yours and realizing that past experience of yours in the similar type of cases now after you block these things you can receive the confirmation with only observation and not from the experience we his power of penetration so great the power of penetration of observation should be so great that the physician takes note of nothing in every individual case except the changes in the health body and mind so a physician should focus only on this particular individual disease that the patient has come with not his past experience not his past disease not your past cases only this particular case in this particular change of health body and mind now hanuman says you should use your senses to note every morbid change in your patient you should listen to your patient this is one of the most true things that you can do as a doctor is to listen to your patient with complete observation now that observation should be unprejudiced now how many modern doctors do you know who actually listen to their patients to them diagnosis of the disease and the blood report is the most important thing rather than the words of the patient i have heard this so many times in my practice that patients complain when i send them to the conventional doctors or allopaths they say that ma'am they don't listen to us they never talk to us they never ask us questions they just ask for the diagnosis whether you have previous prescription previous reports and previous medicines whatever you have taken and whether you have done the reports again and if the patient persists he often gets a reply who is the doctor here now listen to your patient and then after that you listen to the patient's attendants now those who are near the patient or they often see the patient all the time can provide you the best and the most useful information about the state of your patient the nature of the patient the causative factors and modalities and sometimes even the behavior of the patient and even the reaction of the remedies so always give 
importance to the details given by the patient's attendance also. The third important section here is to observe the patient. Here, observation is not limited to the sense of sight. Rather, it stands for all sensory inputs that the physician can gather himself. Be it through observation, smell, hearing, palpitation, auscultation, examination, anything. Anything you observe in your patient is very important. The physician must have keen senses. He should have keen special senses because any information that can give the clue to the remedy is very important. Now, when the patient comes to you, he could be the sound of a cough, the gait, the mannerism, the facial expressions of your patient, the gestures of your patient, the language he uses or the tone of his voice, the odor of his body, the styling of clothes, posture, tongue, face, nails, skin, anything, anything about your patient can give a clue to the remedy. So if you are not giving your 100% attention to the patient or if you are distracted, if you are distracted with your phone, with your laptop or anything else in your clinic, then Finding the right remedy will be more laborious task for you. And if you are attentive enough, you can often find the remedy very quickly. So now you know what not to do and what to do and how to do it. But Henneman says that you will be able to collect all these relevant informations from the patient only if you observe the patient unprejudicedly. So observation of your patient is very important that should be without prejudice. Hanneman says that a physician should keenly observe the changes that occur in the state of health of a person when he is affected by a morbid condition or a disease. He says that the disease changes occurring inside the body are reflected outside in the form of signs and symptoms. We all know that. And if you know these signs and symptoms, you will be able to get the complete picture of the nature of sickness and also you can diagnose the disease quickly. He has gone further and he said that not only the changes in the physical state but also in the mental state of the patient should be recorded and should be observed keenly. Any deviation from the state of health, might be physical or mental, is a part of disease picture and will help in the diagnosis of the disease. In the first part of this aphorism, Henneman is warning us against being a prejudiced observer. So first let us discuss what is being a prejudiced observer as this is a very important and main cause of failure of the cases in our daily practice. So prejudice refers to a judgment or opinion that is formed beforehand or without knowledge of facts. This means if you evaluate a patient before examining the patient or before even taking the case, you are prejudiced or you think of a remedy or the potency before analyzing the case, then you are called prejudiced. So this is what the aphorism number six is as given in the organ on of medicine. So in aphorism number six, Henneman describes from the homeopathic point of view, that is the homeopathic perspective, what the disease actually is or what is the portrait of the disease and what is a perceptible and experienced physician like. And in the first part of this aphorism, Henneman warns us against the transcendental speculations that is which cannot be confirmed from the experience. So, other than being a leading physician, Hahnemann was also a researcher and he used to find out things through experimentations. He was driven to put medical practice on more rational thinking, on more rational experiments. As we all know that during his time, doctors were using theory of disease causation which could not actually be verified like the practice of bloodletting where blood was withdrawn from the body and supposedly it was assumed that it would balance the bodily fluids called humors. So cure did not necessarily take place from these practices and many of the cases were put in danger by these kind of practices. 
So there is also another meaning here which revealed in the footnotes to this aphorism which we will see later. Here, so to use Hahnemann's words, all these perceptible signs represent the disease in its whole extent. That is, together they form the true and only conceivable picture or portrait of the disease. In this particular aphorism, Hahnemann wants to explain that he describes another quality of the homeopathic physician that is, he should be an unprejudiced observer. He should carefully with his keen observation and perception notice prescribe on the basis of the totality of symptoms alone. He should individualize each case as if it's a new case and he should not jump to conclusion on the basis of his past experience or his prejudices. He should know the real cause of the symptoms. He should understand the exterior visible and perceptible signs and symptoms and reflection of the internally deranged vital force. He should treat each case as a different case. And allopaths prescribe on the basis of materialistic cause as we all know and they give same medicine to two patients or to multiple patients suffering from the same materialistic disease. But here in homeopathy we should not prescribe the same medicine just on the basis of the diagnosis. So for example, if two patients are suffering from flu, we should individualize each case and take a detailed case taking of both the cases separately and prescribe medicine on the basis of a rare, peculiar and uncommon symptom which reflect the internally deranged vitality of that particular individual. Except in the cases of genus epidemicus, where one single medicine can be prescribed because it is an epidemic. So, we should not be prejudiced, that is biased, in our opinion while prescribing. I hope you understood the explanation of the aphorism. Now, let us go further and understand the footnote of aphorism number 6. So, let us first read the footnote and then go through the explanation of the footnote. So, in footnote... It is written, I know not, therefore, how it is possible for physicians at the sick bed to allow themselves to suppose that, without most careful attending to the symptoms and being guided by them in the treatment, they ought to seek and could discover only in the hidden and unknown interior what there was to be cured in the disease, arrogantly and ludicrously, pretending that they could without paying much attention to the symptom, discover the alteration that had occurred in the invisible interior and set it to right with unknown medicine and that such a procedure as this could alone be called radical and rational treatment. After this footnote, it is continued in the second para where it is written, is not then that which is cognizable by the senses in disease through the phenomena it displays, the disease itself in the eyes of the physician, since he never can see the spiritual being that produces the disease, that is the vital force, nor is it necessary that he could see it, but only that he should ascertain its morbid actions in order that he may thereby be enabled to cure the disease. What else will the old school search for in the hidden interior of the organism as a prima causa morbi, whilst they reject as an object of cure and contemptuously despise the sensible and manifest representation of the disease, the symptoms that so plainly address themselves to us? What else do they wish to cure in the disease but these? So it is a quite a lengthy paragraph and I understand that it is very difficult language to grasp and to understand but here we will see the explanation of the footnote so don't worry so I'm just going through the actual footnote so that you know that the actual footnote is this and then what is the explanation of that particular footnote now the third footnote that Hahnemann wrote was the physician whose researches are directed towards the hidden relations in the interior of the organism may daily err but the homeopathist who grasps the requisite carefulness the whole group of symptom possesses a sure guide and if he succeed in removing the whole group of symptom he has likewise more assuredly 
destroyed the internal hidden cause of the disease. So this last footnote, that is the third footnote, was entirely omitted or removed from the sixth edition. So that is the difference between the sixth aphorism from the fifth edition and from the sixth edition. That this particular third paragraph from the footnote is entirely removed from the sixth edition. Okay. So now let us understand the explanation of the footnote according to Henneman. Now. There is also another meaning here which is revealed in the footnotes to this aphorism that medicine always looked for the primary cause that is the hidden cause somewhere in the interior of the body. Now Henneman's view was contrary to this. He was not at all bothered about the primary cause that it's the whole being or a complex system that is engaged in the disease. So he was more bothered about the person or about the individual rather than the primary cause of the disease. Therefore, it is a totality of the perceptible symptoms which is the disease. So, in Henneman's words, all the perceptible signs that represent the disease in its whole extent, that is, together they form the true and only conceivable portrait of the disease. Here, we have understood that all the symptoms should be taken into consideration, all that are felt by the patient himself. All those who are remarked by those around him and all those symptoms that are observed by the physician. Subjective experience of the patient along with the objective observation of the physician, family, friends and colleagues will constitute to the conceivable portrait of the disease. In the footnote, Henneman kept saying that you should not try to find the cause of the disease in the hidden interior of the human being. The disease speaks to you through the language of signs and symptoms. So give importance to the language of the body, to the signs and symptoms and you will not need to create empty theories or speculations to explain the phenomena of the disease. Observe what is happening to the patient, what changes are occurring in his or her state and instead of trying to speculate theories that cannot be proven with experience, observe by being unprejudiced. Our prejudices are reflected in our practice in many ways. In deciding what is curable, what is not curable and also in diagnosing the patients. Sometimes when the patient comes to us and tells his symptoms, you immediately try to diagnose the case. Okay, but that is wrong. That is being prejudiced. So, in selecting remedy, sometimes we just select the remedy after seeing the patient. Suppose we have an obese patient, you just think of the remedy calcarea cup, but that is being prejudiced. And also while selecting potencies, in repetitions and also in case management and so on. So, basically we are prejudiced in every step of our case taking. So, that is completely wrong according to Henneman. All these prejudices are very common but the most often prejudice that we come up with is selecting the remedy. A special condition which is so called the favorite remedy syndrome. Now many of the doctors have this favorite remedy syndrome. What is this? You have a set of favorite remedies and you always try to apply those remedies on your patients. All of us tend to have developed some special affinities towards medicines which we think give good results or have given good results in similar type of cases in the past. So we all have got this favorite remedy syndrome. So we have favorite remedies for acne, favorite remedies for headache, favorite remedies for hair fall, hemorrhoids, autism, sore throat etc etc. So it is very hard to shed this prejudice and evaluate the patient objectively. So you have to evaluate every patient as a new patient objectively. You have to take every case as a new case without being prejudiced. So the moment we become prejudiced, we stop listening to what a patient is saying and start listening to what we want to listen. We stop seeing the totality and we see only that fits our prejudice or our favorite remedy. Our every sensory channel is affected and in the same way, with our prejudices, our senses of objectiveness is blocked. So, it is very important that we shed our prejudices 
before we start taking a case so every case should be seen with unprejudiced observation and that is what henneman focuses on in the aphorism number 6 now since we have covered what is a prejudiced observer but is it really possible to become unprejudiced is it that easy i personally feel it is not because prejudices are often derived from our past experiences and they are usually a part of our being so we are generally prejudiced in all our living experiences in all our life experiences so suppose if you get a call from a friend and you get this prejudiced observation about that friend and you know what they are going to talk about so what they are going to talk about as you have an assumption of it that is also prejudiced so prejudice or being prejudiced is become our life experience so how do you get rid of your prejudices i believe that the awareness of one's prejudice is the best way to diminish the force of our prejudices so you have to become self aware that you are becoming prejudiced suppose a patient comes to you in your clinic and you start thinking of pulsatile as a remedy now you have to become self aware that you are becoming prejudiced so that stops your observation as a prejudiced observation and then you can consciously start an unprejudiced observation and work in the way that henneman wanted us to work during our case taking so that was all about the aphorism number 6 along with the explanation of the footnote now let me give you a summary of the aphorism number 6 in aphorism number 6 henneman describes about the quality of homeopathic physician that is he should be an unprejudiced observer he should carefully with his keen observation and perception notice prescribe on the basis of totality of symptoms he should individualize each case as a new case he should not jump to conclusion on the basis of his past experience he should know the real cause of the symptoms he should understand the exterior visible and perceptible signs and symptoms are a reflection of internally deranged vital force he should understand that each case is different allopaths prescribe on the basis of materialistic cause they give same medicine to two different patients suffering from same materialistic cause but in homeopathy we should not prescribe the same medicine on the basis of similar diagnosis example if two patients are suffering from flu we should individualize each case take detailed case taking of both the cases separate and prescribe medicine on the basis of rare peculiar uncommon symptoms which reflect internally deranged vitality of the vital force we should not be prejudiced that is biased in our opinion while prescribing so that was all about aphorism number 6 if you have any doubts about the aphorism please go through the video and then you can mention your doubts in the comment section below and i will make sure to explain all your questions and clear all your doubts and thank you for watching this video if you like the video please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and colleagues thank you so much